should see Shona's face right now. She's like <laughs> repelled <laughs> at what's about to go out of her mouth. <laughs> you need to vomit. It's almost like a what? Yeah, I do. It's almost like a what? And you're hung over too. So I know. Like... <laughs> she could actually vomit. This is the podcast oh. episode where Shona will vomit. <laughs> 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 Hi. Okay, I'm gonna the, hold my mic closer to my face today too. Yeah, cool. Yeah, good idea. Because it sounds better it, in my head. When it sounds better to me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yay! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, let's start this off. I do have a story to tell. But let's get okay, it off tell. anyway. Just, yeah, let's um, do it. Tell the story. Let's do it. Yeah. Welcome to the Wild Roads with Paul Ivy and Shona Lee. Conversations about how we don't do stuff normal. Hello, Shona. Hi, Paula. How's your first day of being 46? Six. 46. Mm-hmm. I can do math. <laughs> you can do math. You're very clever. You are a very clever chick. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is reminding me that I'm 46. Let me put it that way. I'm just like, <laughs> I am so young inside. I'm like a kid. But my body knows it's not it's not 20 anymore. I had the best day yesterday, but today it's just like, okay, this is good. This is the gift of my birthday is to look after this vessel of mine, to get a bit mm-hmm. fitter, to probably, yeah, enjoy your parties, but not like you did in your 20s. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, Until it's 9 great. PM. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Shana! Thank you oh so much. Thank you. It was, it was very, it was a beautiful day. Absolutely beautiful day. But yeah, day, day drinking kills. Mm. <laughs> day, day drinking is definitely a young it's... person's activity. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny times, funny oh, times. Been a while yeah. since my last date. Oh, actually, no. When we were up in Early Beach, I was drinking during the day. Yeah. That was probably my first day drinking experience in a very, very long time. Yeah, yeah. And that, yeah, the next day was not so great. No, no. no. <laughs> it is definitely a reminder why we don't anymore. <laughs> Or at least if you do, you have a rest day afterwards planned. Exactly. To do. <laughs> That's right. I did do my I did do my live with my sunglasses this morning. <laughs> like, oh, how did that go? <laughs> yeah, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Surprisingly, I did very well. Oh, yes, nice. it was really good. Yeah, no, it, I was good. I was sensible, but you know, I'm just feeling it. But mm. um yeah, no, it was really, it was really, really good. And I had a lot to think about being 46 and, you know, being, having been born in 1975 and all what actually happened in 1975. I had a big Google search on that to work out what did happen the year I was born. Isn't and it's actually really fascinating. Yeah. It's so you take it for granted. Mm. So we're going to dedicate this podcast to 1975. <laughs> the year a legend was born. The, the saying, year like. the Shona Lee, the legend, was born. What a great yeah. year. Oh, so man. I also found some interesting facts about 1975. But before we start, let's start okay. with hashtag awkward question time. Oh, yeah. And... Seen as we're celebrating the birth of the Shona Lee and the life of the Shona Lee so far, that like what this is like, this was like a real thing back in like our day. Do kids still do this? Like, I feel like a real old person if I don't know if kids actually still do this or not. But I guess it's because magazines aren't as big anymore, perhaps. But what were the posters on your bedroom wall when you oh. were a kid? What were the posters that you'd walk in your wall and you'd be like, oh, my God, it's so dreamy. My <laughs> wall was covered. Mm. And they Who were all out, of a, all out of the magazine. So I used to buy TV yeah. hits and um, Dolly magazine and 
all the others. Yeah. And so it was, and even if they weren't a poster, you'd cut out, they'd have some kind of um, one pager of somebody and you'd cut that out and put it oh, on. Yeah. Or it'd be ads, like a Cindy Crawford ad and you cut the words off the bottom and put her out. Oh, so yeah. I would do that as well. So, And there was um, also, I remember yeah. of those sorts of magazines, they also had editions that were like all posters. Like this was the yes. edition. Like it was like once a year or something, they'd have like a poster edition. It was like, okay, yep. guys, get your blue tack ready because <laughs> you're going to be redecorating your walls. <laughs> yeah. Oh and it would gosh. suck when there was somebody awesome on both sides. You're like, ah. Which oh, one? I know. Mm. That did suck. That did suck big time. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you who I had on the wall. Yeah. I had Johnny Depp. Mm. oh my mm-hmm, god mm-hmm, I had mm-hmm. Johnny Depp I had Emilio Estevez I had Tiffany you had Emilio Estevez <laughs> mm. do you know what I don't even <laughs> god tell me you know the movie A Night at the Roxbury <laughs> with Will Farrell, <laughs> and he's like Emilio <laughs> and he tipped his hat like this <laughs> the mighty duck himself <laughs> that is a great movie is it yeah <laughs> that's what i think i've, I've seen it a few time. times now um a great, a great movie who else do i have so i had tiffany like oh yeah and new kids on the block and i had skid row mm-hmm. and i had um there would have been axel rose yes definitely mm. and do you know what I had? I had Sylvester Stallone on my wall. What? That's I know. Like, this is oh. odd. I had a moment. Yeah. I had a moment in time where I was just like, I don't know. Why. Wrestling is hot. Not wrestling, boxing. <laughs> it was, I'm a it big was all sports fan over here. <laughs> Not. <laughs> <laughs> it was about the muscle. I think it was the muscle and dark hair, dark skin. But I, um, I remember my mum's friend came over and I think I had him stuck on my school book as well with the contact, you know, you covered your oh, school yeah. books with contact yep. and you had your favourites. Yeah. And I, did I remember as extra yeah, nerdier than that though, but I'll oh, share that in a second. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's kind of like, yeah, cool. Yeah. Most of us <laughs> did that. I did something yeah, yeah. super nerdy. Anyway. Oh my yep. God, I can't wait. Okay, I can't <laughs> wait for that. Um <laughs> So mum's friend was over and she's having a coffee and obviously my, my books were on the bench and she's just like, she saw Celeste Stallone and she's like, oh my God, Shona, if you bring home someone like that, I will kill you. Not only your mother will kill you, but I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> obviously not a fan. <laughs> so we're not digging this vibe. Okay. Right. Yeah, we're not doing this. Okay. <laughs> not the vibe. Bedroom. I'll show you some more. Choose which one. <laughs> oh, it was funny. Those times are funny. I'm barely remembering it because it was a long time ago. Mm. 30 odd years. Mm. Yeah. What about you? Okay. So, yeah, I had new kids on the block for shows. Um, yeah. Who else did I have? I had, do you remember Jeremy Jordan? He was on my wall. This is like Jordan. Like he was around the same sort of era. Right. Um, And Marky Mark, obviously. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was kind of like early-ish. Oh, and I also remember I had this beautiful like um, poster. I don't know if you remember the band, Ugly Kid Joe. Oh, yeah. Whitfield Crane. Oh, my God. I was obsessed with him. Yes. Yeah. I had the best. He was like the middle poster and then everybody else is kind of like around it's all around right yeah yep. yeah the shrine so is, yeah yeah um and then as i was getting older i definitely oh my god i had the best lenny kravitz poster it was amazing oh and gosh, yes. then when i started to get a bit older in like high school and I know we talked about this on another podcast episode where I used to hide in a dark room and develop photos of cute guys that we stalked in the playground. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh <Sometimes. my> God. <laughs> I was one of those people that had like a million photo frames just all around my room of like pictures of my friends, and blah, blah, blah. 
And like, I'd have the occasional photo of like the stalk top oh guy, <laughs> like the random one. But then, like, maybe one or two here. But then I also would, in photo frames, put posters inside photo frames and just pretend like. <laughs> here's your, <laughs> here's your boyfriend. I yes. <laughs> I want Joshua Jackson. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, because when he funny. was Casey in Dawson Cre- Dawson's Creek, it was so yeah. hot. Um, so I had Joshua Jackson. I had a big poster of Jim Morrison on the back of my door. I remember that. Yeah. And then I also had Ben Gillies from um, Silverchair because he was the whole oh, Yeah. And, <laughs> and also, was what was the other band? There was another. Oh, Pearl Jam. Eddie Vedder was all over yeah. my list too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's just yeah, bring it like it's, it's the memories that come back, like River Phoenix. I had on all oh, <gasps> yes, and um, Kurt Cobain. I had, yeah, that was later though, because that was sort of just coming out when I was sort of like year, year 11, 12, yeah, mm. but yeah, earlier. Oh my god, I just had a cringy memory, yeah, sure. The- Michael J. Fox. <laughs> you should see Shona's face right now. She's like <laughs> repelled. <laughs> and what's about to come out of her mouth? <laughs> do you need to vomit? It's almost like a what? Yeah, I do. It's almost like a what? And you're high over too. So I know. Like... <laughs> she could actually vomit. This is the podcast oh. episode where Shona will vomit. <laughs> I'm totally past that bit now. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, bloody Michael J. Fox. Why? Oh, my God. Okay, my husband, Brendan, is obsessed with Michael J. Fox. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was like, Back to the Future is like the yeah. sickest movie of all time, right? So he was a huge Michael J. Fox fan. Yeah. So I wouldn't have, yeah. Like he, he was, was also like on a sitcom crush. as well. And a family sitcom thing. Family, I can't remember. Family ties. Family ties, that's right. Yeah, so there's that. Oh, and Michael Jackson was always on there. Yeah. Man, oh, yeah, there was heaps. So, yeah. Good times, the posters Good on time. the wall. Years. Yeah, and, you know, to answer your question, <laughs> the kids do still. They do? The teenagers, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Thank and goodness. we couldn't, we didn't let the kids here because we were renting and we couldn't, but. Like you know, to wreck the walls with blue tack and all that sort of stuff. Mm. But now they've gone hell for the for the yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, totally. Your response was even better than mine. That was great. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. They've gone hell for leather. And yep. yeah, K pop stuff. India's got K pop and she's, yeah, oh. and movie stuff and Batman. And it's really interesting how they're all different, our teenagers. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. Do and they buy this... the magazines? Where do they no, get the posters so from? No, so it's not magazines. And you've got to, you have to buy them like on Etsy and you've got to find oh. them online. you got to find wow. them online. That's yeah. dedication. To like, it is dedication or well, on the merch sites of their favorites because there's I don't know about the magazines now but kids don't buy magazines oh actually because when you'd go and see when live music was a thing can we please bring that mm-hmm. back because I'm missing that badly but when you have bring, the merch yeah the merch stands they've usually got posters as well as yeah stuff too. yep I they always do. bought a t-shirt do you yeah I'm pretty sure yeah. you did I think oh yeah that no yeah. I was like you go to the concert, you buy the t-shirt. Buy the t-shirt, exactly. <laughs> I had the best collection of t-shirts, but um, yeah, that was a really sad thing that I had to get rid yeah, of. Yeah, you did. I remember that. Every when we that had sad. to, when With we lived in the mouldy house, yeah, that, uh, made us very, very that sick. Sucks. So we had to get rid of a lot of the stuff that was in that cupboard, and that made me really sad because my whole t-shirt collection was in there. <laughs> but yeah. I found these really good, just off topic really quickly, I found these really cool sites where I buy Simon's T-shirts. He, he loves the old rock T-shirts, but not the ones yeah. that you buy in the shops that everyone like, buys. Yeah. Like the genuine, real cool stuff, the, the ones that Slash wears and all that. 
Yeah, not the ones from like the mainstream shops that kids wear them and they're like, I don't even know what the Ramones is. I don't even wear it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. So yeah, I've got some cool sites from the UK and stuff that I buy. Yeah, some really rigid dizzy ones. Love them. Nice. Vintage. Vintage. Nice. All right, let's talk about <laughs> <laughs> the unprofessional segue. It's Shona Baraka. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 1975. Right, 75. <laughs> 1975. We thought it would be fun for Shona Lee's birthday episode to look at the year that Shona Lee was born because it was a few decades ago. <laughs> Just quietly. <laughs> Thanks, mate. It was Cheers for that. <laughs> last century. <laughs> I was born last century too, but like. It's really strange to think like how how long ago that was and how different like the world four was. decades ago. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. And you know those jokes that the kids say at school, your mum is so old. You know your mum is <laughs> old. <laughs> your mum is talking so about old. the kids. <laughs> kids these days with their non-posted walls. <laughs> <laughs> That's my alter ego, FYI. Her name is Pearl, and she sometimes comes out. She's an old lady. I adore Pearl. Yeah, she's fun. She's very fun, and you do it so well. You don't need to practice. I <laughs> don't. <laughs> she's just a part of me. <laughs> Pearl, move out of the way. Pearl's coming through. <laughs> Sorry, Sharon. You go ahead. <laughs> This is a great episode. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Are you crying? I'm crying. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. What was I going to say? Um, <laughs> 75. Four dickens. Oh, the man- <laughs> okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> Oh, get out of here. <laughs> your mother's so old. <laughs> Back in your, box. your mother's so old. What? Your memory fails you. No, but your mother's so old. Remember the, those jokes? Well, the, my kids used to say that all the time because, you know, at primary school, they that was the funniest thing ever. Anyway, oh. when they said your mother's so old, <laughs> um, she was around when Colour TV came in. Correct. What? 1975, Colour TV in Australia, the 1st oh, of March. Okay. That's, no sh- no that, shit. That's <laughs> worse than when they say you were alive before the internet. Like, <laughs> I was like, when I grew up, when I was a kid, I didn't have this. And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, there was no internet. What's the internet, mum? I'm like, the thing that makes these things work. And they're like, what do you mean it wouldn't work? Like, you turn it on. <laughs> no. the they don't oh, understand no. the internet, obviously, but like they're like, but yeah, what is not how the you, internet. I how do you know. not have it? Mm. Yeah. So color TV, hey? Color TV, 1975. <laughs> that makes that you is, feel old. That's old school. <laughs> that is so old school. And Microsoft was founded in that year. Oh. By by Bill Gates. Laser printer was invented. Oh. That's how old I am. It's, and the digital camera, Paula, was created Ooh. by Stephen Sasson, I think his name, and Kodak. Well, there you Bit go. Of trivia for you. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I didn't get my first digital camera until like after I'd finished high school. So it would have been like early 2000s. And I remember digital yeah. was like just a thing. But that makes sense if it was like the first digital camera because it would have been like not a portable cheap thing that people could easily access when it was like the first one i'm sure it would have been you probably had to carry it around in a wheelbarrow like because <laughs> <laughs> so back in the day pre-color tv that's how people used to carry shit around <laughs> in a wheelbarrow Paula going to the beach to take her selfies <laughs> in the real world with the camera. Oh, but you know what's funny? No. It's actually like those carts and wheels that people 
like pull their kids along to the beach. Yes. Here. Have you seen those? Correct. That's I have very, seen them. I don't know if that's just an Australian thing, but um, I could are, really do with kind of like a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> We're still doing it. <laughs> oh. oh. In other news, ACDC <laughs> had the album of the year in 1975 worldwide. Oh, which Australia. one was that? Ah, uh, good question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, my God, please call it. <laughs> well, Shona hits the Google. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Well, you know what? When I did Google, a lot of politics came up, and I'm finding it really hard to give a shit about politics at the moment. Do you know what it's I It's really found, annoying I me. Found a, yeah, politics. politics. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. One thing I will say about <laughs> everybody thinks they're a politician in this stuff, but one thing I will say is like, <laughs> Because you think it's true doesn't mean it's a fact. <laughs> I feel like that is half of it. Like probably most of the stuff on the internet, when you try to research stuff, it's like people's opinions stated I as know. facts. And you're like, is this a fact though? Or is this just your own personal opinion? Anywho, that was off topic. That's my rant. But, but you're fun, right. Exactly. I one totally fun fact that I found out about 1975 yeah. was that that was when the mood ring was invented or like really? made a thing. How cool is that? I loved my mood ring. I had a mood ring, yeah. Wasn't that like the thing to have a it mood ring? It was the thing. I was always angry according to my mood <laughs> ring. <laughs> <laughs> they were so uh, freaking cool. They were very cool. But I think it might have been the, oh, what year did My Girl come out? Because you remember how she had a mood ring in My Girl? I think that might have made it like a super cool thing to have. Yeah. Yeah, it probably it, did because when there was, it, I would have been around 15 to 17 when I first knew about the mood ring. Yeah. So oh, that I was like older. early 90s. Yeah. 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 Well, the, yeah. the movie that came out that changed everyone's life in 1975 was Jaws. That made sharks so scary. Jaws, yes. I couldn't it swim was, in a pool by myself. Yeah, no. Jaw, yeah, Jaws is very, like, I don't want to say problematic, but it is. <laughs> like, I'm sure it that is. wasn't the intention of no. the movie. The intention no. of making the movie would be, like, let's make a scary movie. But it just, it was, it just shifted the mindset of a lot of people around sharks in nature because it was yeah. kind of like a realistically looking movie at for the time like the technology that they had with making that movie kind of made it feel really ris- realistic and like I can't believe that like I know I probably never really listened to my parents but like how like how young I was when I watched those movies they absolutely scared the bejeebus out of me and yeah. I had nightmares I still get that music in my head when I go into <laughs> <laughs> deep water deep water. <laughs> and going snorkeling yes. and stuff. like oh. yeah just yeah yeah it changed changed a lot of people's wives wives <laughs> lives <laughs> <laughs> it changed <laughs> there's gonna be some editing in this one yeah <laughs> thanks for making my job yes as editor. <laughs> hard for me thanks i'll send you flowers uh, <laughs> i know it changed a lot of people's lives and it did my kids wanted to watch it right or wrong i'm like are you sure and they're like, yeah, yeah. So I watched it with them. I'm like, this is bloody ridiculous. Like, really. Loved it at the time. Like, hats off to, you know, it being around. Because I don't know anyone that hasn't watched it. But yeah, um, successful in the film industry. Like, kudos. But, um, but then you look back and you look, oh, my God. Compared to how movies are made now, I was looking like, how I was scared, I don't know, because that is so unrealistic. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, next it was, it was a little shark one minute and then the next shot it's, like, bigger than my house kind of thing. Like, oh, wow. It's so funny. It's so funny. So, I yeah, it's very interesting it to watch it now and you yeah. just wouldn't be scared. Yeah. Mm. 
Whereas See. my kids watch Alien versus Predator and those type of movies. And <laughs> I, I can't watch them. <laughs> I put in my pants. Yeah. No, but see, that's the thing. Like, I can't watch any movies that are, like, under the water with sharks at all. There was a movie. What was it called? Oh, The Meg. The one about the Megalodon. That was on recently. Brennan's like, let's watch The Meg. And I'm like, oh, what's The Meg? And he's like, it's about a Megalodon. And I was like, no. (laughs) No, Absolutely not. (laughs) Because it's probably going to make sharks scary. And somebody's probably going to get eaten. <laughs> and I don't oh, watch yeah, that. exactly. And then there was, I didn't, I didn't watch I, that one, but there was another one. Well, he watched it while I read a book, but like I'd watch little bits and I'm like, no, I'm too scared. But there was actually another one that I watched that like the whole time it was just, I don't know how people do it, but the whole time I felt like I was in survival mode because it just, it felt so real. So there was a movie called, oh, what's it called? I cannot think of the name. It's got Blake Lively in it. And she is apparently in Mexico and, or somewhere, and she swims out to go for a surf and then there's this shark and then she gets stuck out in the middle of the ocean with this shark like circling her and then she gets onto some sort of buoy or something that's like out in the middle of the ocean and she climbs that and then she's got to try and swim back holy crap it was actually filmed on lord howe island which is in australia which is where we got married so that's why we wanted to watch it because it was filmed at um, ned's beach there I'm like, yeah, hey, we're from there. And then I was like, why do I want to watch a movie about a shark somewhere that I love to go and oh swim? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You'll never want to swim there again. The Shallows. That's what it was called. Oh, oh yeah. I haven't seen yeah. that yet. And I, I, I think I'm like you. I'm just like, oh, I don't think I want to. Yeah. And I was like, mm. oh, my God. Sharks are so scary. Like the whole time. Like it's coming. Yeah. It's going to eat her. All this sort of stuff. And I do actually follow quite a few like instagram accounts of people who um there's like uh, the woman who does the, sh- the dives with the sharks yes and, i follow her too yeah. i can't think of the name right now but then there's also there's quite a few other accounts that i follow where they go swimming with the sharks and they're trying to raise awareness around you know how beautiful sharks are and how much it like how beautiful a creature they actually really are mm. but of course apex predator you do need to be very careful of them oh, absolutely but they're not the like oh, there's a person, I'm going to go eat them, animal that these no, movies. No, it's really you know, surprising, isn't it? Really, yeah. I love it. What else happened in 1975? Wages for women. <gasps> oh, the average... you were born in a very like... It was, a time when, <laughs> it, was a, it was a time when um, there was a lot of, you know, rights for women. And especially with the Gough Whitlam government, and he yeah. left at that time. Um, and Malcolm Fraser came in the year I was born. So, but the average wage was seven thousand six hundred per year. What? Yeah, For seven thousand six hundred per year. I know, like, cost of living is very different from then to now. But what was that? Do you know what the average wage was for a male? Um, no. In saying that, in Melbourne, in like city, you could buy a house for sixteen thousand, mm. and in Sydney, it was like twenty thousand. Yes, yes, because I know that was pretty much. I think when my parents bought our house, I remember them telling me what they originally bought it for, which was before my brother was born, which was he was born in seventy nine. Mm-hmm. and it was it was like around twenty five thousand dollars or something they bought this house and then when they sold it it was like I, I can't remember how much they sold it for but this was back um late 90s or uh, yeah late na- 90s they sold it for yeah. you know hundreds of thousands of dollars and I was like whoa that's pretty cool hey? like 20 years and you made hundreds of thousands of dollars but then you look at the real estate these days especially in the last like year here, it's like places have gone up by like a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Within a year or something. It's crazy. It's, no, no, that's it. And um, it just I goes to show it. like the 
difference in how much a place is compared to yearly wage like yeah. if you even if that was low and you made seven thousand nine what was it seven thousand nine yeah yeah a year but then you bought a house for 16 like yeah it's like that's three half years. just just under half the amount yeah. you make in a year so you think about what you make in a year now could you buy could you even find a house that for the general wage that somebody makes yeah like I think the average wage in Australia I don't quote me on this I don't maybe around 50 or 60 thousand dollars a year is like the base think, wage maybe yeah maybe I even less I don't yeah. know I, I'm not in the workforce <laughs> I've worked for other people in a very long time for, yeah we haven't been there <laughs> so for I'm sorry if that offended anybody but like yeah. you think about that like where do you even find property that costs twice that amount it's not even something. could you find you something for a hundred thousand dollars you just can't not it's... in Sydney, you cannot. No, at all. Like not even a little bit. Nope. I don't think you'd be able to find anywhere in Australia. <laughs> like, is no, that you insane? struggle. It is really insane. Well, yeah, it's it's really. Well, you buy a caravan for I don't know. Well, you could, yes. a, you know, that's true. Mm. But, but they depreciate. In... They don't. Yes, exactly. They don't increase in value. They decrease. <laughs> Yes. especially when you take it off road and you travel around Australia <laughs> swinging behind the car yeah. uh but no seriously like this it's that's insane it's insane and like the, I think it was like 25 cents for a, a loaf of bread or something mm. petrol was still 52 cents a liter back then that was interesting mm. to me because it's like around what a dollar um, 40 now something like that we're diesel oh yeah so you're paying a, so it's a bit more but it yeah. doesn't run out as quick so. mm. but yeah i think um but also there wasn't as many cars though was there in 1975 like everybody's got multiple <laughs> cars now. Car. <laughs> like oh my gosh you go down our street and every yeah, driver no, has at least it. two cars in it if not more and you're like what the hell <laughs> so many cars everywhere yeah it's funny isn't it and yeah it was like the pride and joy of the family was the car back then and Mm. you know seat belts was an interesting thing it wasn't mandatory then didn't have to wear it yeah yeah I remember I remember actually I remember buying car seats for like my daughter when she was oh just before she was born and we were researching car seats and yeah, I remember my mum saying, oh yeah, we just sort of like clipped you into this like little net thing. And I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, we didn't have car seats. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't have car seats? Like I was a baby. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah. This- <laughs> and then now we've got to practically like restrain a child to get them into like these things strapped down so they can't move. Exactly. That's exactly right. We had, um, I remember like, I remember I've got a fond memory of my, well, it's probably not fond, but an early memory of, because <laughs> it's scary now, of, you know, my little cousins, like they're in the bassinet. You know, the bassinets, the old style oval ones with the handles, like cane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what they had in those days. And it's like, you know, that take them to Nan's house and, you know, yeah. that's where they sort of stayed. Sort of like a capsule, I guess, but old style. Yeah. And just putting that on the back seat of the car. Oh, yeah, sure. Travel. <laughs> isn't it but they funny didn't, they didn't have to and but and the, i did look it up yeah and at the time they'll be like oh, that's just normal that's just what and then do. now you think yeah. about that and you'd be like oh, oh my god how could you have yeah. even like started the car and not like but it's it's so interesting how that's such a different like mindset yeah now. yeah that's right well there was no i guess there was no um tv ads that were you know about you know road safety and the horrific ads that we watch now could you imagine that years when we were watching tv like as kids they're just and i get it because it's to scare people it's to actually you know to get them to pay attention to the safety 
of things of speeding and um you know yeah not taking not taking breaks and things like that but those types of campaigns weren't around back then yeah it's it's so interesting because like you get it and you're like yeah, yeah because you know some people aren't aware that you know just how dangerous driving can be yeah. or just how dangerous it can be to be tired where you drive yeah. Yeah. but at the same time it's kind of like putting things into your head that might not have been a thing and then you start to go oh when I'm tired I, I'll fall asleep at the wheel and then I'll crash the car it's like you start to put that <laughs> into your mindset it's like oh I'm falling yeah. asleep oh I crashed the car now like I wonder it would be so interesting if anybody ever would do like a, I don't even know if that's possible, but like some sort of research around the impact advertising has in certain ways. Cause here's the thing, right? I was watching, oh, it's on Netflix. It's a series called 100 humans. Have you watched that yet? Oh, no, no. Okay. No, no, yeah. It was, it was pretty funny. They got a hundred humans. They did all these experiments with them. Like obviously it's out of a hundred people, like their findings probably aren't all like, Oh yeah, this is fact sort of thing. It was just kind of fun. Yeah. Just asking them to participate in ways to try and test like just human stuff. And one of the things was around constructive criticism and positive reinforcement. And it was like, mm -hmm. they got, they got this like guy who's like a plate spinner in like, I don't know, a circus or a performing art show or whatever, how they have the stick and they've got the, the plate swirling yeah. on top of the stick. And then they've got to transfer the swirling plate from one stick to the other stick, that sort of thing. Oh yeah. 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 And um, they had everybody spin the plates together sort of thing and have this like training session with this guy and everybody's trying and everything. And then the they didn't know it but they were put into two groups when they came in to show the guy that what they'd been practicing because they sent everybody away to practice and then they came in and one at a time they came in and the guy sort of like gave his feedback as to like how good they they did it right and so half of the people he had to give like criticisms to and half the people he had to give like positive feedback to Wow. And it didn't matter. Like they sort of just randomly picked who they were going to give what, what advice to. Right. So it wasn't all like the people that were terrible or like how they performed. It was just based on, okay, this person we're going to give bad feedback to. All right. And anyway, there was this one girl who came in and she like, she was the best out of everybody. Like she'd hashtag nailed it. Right. And she was spinning. And she's like, yeah, this is so easy. Oh my God. Like I never knew that this was like a cool thing that I could do. Yeah. And she was so proud of herself. And she's like, went in there and she's like, yeah, I'm going to nail this sort of thing. And he had to give her like a criticism. And he was just like, yeah, it wasn't very good. Like oh. your techniques off, like, I don't know. I just didn't get anything from that. Like just sort of, I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was yeah, kind of yeah, like, yeah, this yeah, thing, yeah. like it wasn't great. Like it oh, wasn't a great performance sort of thing. And she was like, yeah. oh. and you could just oh. see her soul crush. And like, there was other people that were completely terrible and their plates were flying everywhere. And he's like, oh, you did a great job. It's so good. All this sort of stuff. Right. So they then went and practiced again for like another, I don't know, hour or two. And then they came back afterwards and they all had to like perform again. And it was like overwhelming the amount of people that got criticized, like even constructive criticism, cri criticism, like, oh, this wasn't good enough. But, you know, if you work on this, this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, as opposed to like, you, you're doing a really good job. I really like your effort, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. Like the people that got the criticism did so much worse the second time around. It makes so much sense. And, yeah. And there was this one wow. guy. Oh my gosh. He was this older guy. And like he did okay in the first round. And I remember the guy had to give him criticism. And he was like, my dog could do better than that. And he was like, crushed. Oh. And anyway, he came back and he completely like bombed the second time. And then they oh. told him, they're like, he goes, you like, I had to give you bad like yeah back like that was part of the Aww. thing and then um they got the whole crowd to like like cheer his name and cheer him on and he was doing it amazingly so the whole 
like to have a whole room of people cheer you on actually wow. boosts your performance. Yeah. And even just a little bit of criticism can really derail yeah. somebody and really like their performance starts to like. Yeah. And it's so interesting, like just that shift in what you're receiving mentally. Yeah. Like imagine if we had ads that were like, you're a great driver and blah, 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 like encouraging people to like, you know, when you take breaks, I really love it. Like, I don't know. That sounds like a really lame. I like, know. I totally wish thing, but like, Yeah. If you switch it from I'm drilling t- fear into people and then going, yes. oh crap, I kind of do that. Maybe I'm a shit driver and like, you know, maybe I'm not I doing the best totally parenting thing because this ad told me that, you know, bad parents do this and blah, blah, blah. like that sort of stuff. Like, what would happen if I we love changed this. the way we advertised to people? I think this is great. I love it. I've, I've watched the Gruden transfer and stuff. Like I love this sort of stuff. And yeah. I think, I think you're onto something because the more they're just going further and further into not really violence, but it's not nice to watch and further and further. And it's just like, well, it's not making an impact. Now we have to go harder. It's not making the impact. Now we have to go harder. And it's normalizing. Doing- that shock it's, to the system we're desensitizing yeah you know but movies we're... and shows and stuff don't help with that and games because we're surrounded by watching violence all of the time like even in like you, you see it even in kids movies it's like yeah. the violent things that happen and I don't want to be yeah. one of those parents that's like I don't want my kids to ever watch anything because oh it's too violent but like yeah but at the same time it's even the subtle things can become quite normalized in your subconscious. So Mm -hmm. wonder why we have a world where there are some heinous crimes happening, but yet we seem to normalize that and we enjoy watching it in a movie. Like I can't do the really like horrific horror style movies. I used to when I was younger, but now I'm just like, I can't even my nervous system just goes crazy and now that I know that like what you're watching on a show, like there's a part of your brain that doesn't actually realize if that's something you're watching and it's a pretend thing or if it's actually happening to your body. So that stress sort of moves through your body as if Oops. it's happening yeah. to you right now. That's so it. I think me being aware of that just makes it heightened, but it's like, we're kind of not normalizing a lot of the stuff that maybe if we See, but it's like it makes so much money. <laughs> People are not yeah. going to stop doing it. But no, if we choose not to watch exactly it. Right. Well, I don't watch it. I don't. I don't watch things. I don't because I can't. And sometimes, of course, Simon loves movies, but I'm just like, I can't watch it because I know that's the type of movie that I will feel that it's real. I know, like yeah. you can say, it's just a movie. It's just pretend, Shane. But my body feels it. Yeah, I feel like it it's stays. real. It stays. I think about it for weeks. I can't sleep yep. that night because I'm thinking about it. I'm ha- I'm have I don't even have an anxiety attack, but I'm not. My nervous system's a bit shot. I sweat in it. I I get sad for people. I get really scared, especially when there's movies with children in it that are you know being <gasps> kidnapped. Do, or I, I can't. can't do it. Nah, no I way. I can't do it. No. Nope. Nope. Either. So yeah, it's really fascinating because I I have been watching a few series and just probably one every six months or something with time. And yeah, I have to choose really carefully which ones to watch. I watched a series called Ozark. I loved it. I did love it in the oh, end. But the Brendan first loved that. The first season, the first yeah, the so first dark. season, I struggled. I oh, it is so dark. But like, even the filmography. Yeah, but even the way they shot it and the way they rendered yeah. the film, it was like this yeah. dark, greeny tinge. Like yeah. it just made you feel sick, kind of watching it's it. Awful. Like this does not feel yeah. right at all. Yeah. Like clever of them because it was oh, like actually exactly. cinematically brilliant with the way that they yeah. did it to evoke that within you. But I'm like, yeah, yeah I can't sit with yeah. this because it, it, oh. I struggled. I really did struggle. And I was, yeah, I, but. I somehow got past it <laughs> and I was I could watch it and then I'd you know close my eyes and stuff and so I'd, I'd missed episodes and it really didn't matter but I'm watching one now called Yellowstone 
yeah um with kevin costner and he directed it which is brilliant 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 How brilliant was kevin costner back in the day by the well. way i loved him i was obsessed with him with robin the hood? robin hood yes mm. that soundtrack i bought that soundtrack mm. Mm. yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> and the and bodyguard oh bodyguard postman yeah oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. mm. Yeah, I'm a little bit dreamy about Kevin Costner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin. <laughs> We're at about the same age. No, he's not really. He's older, he's, he's older than me. <gasps> I'll do it for you, Kevin Costner. <laughs> Love, Sean <Shauna> Lee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fantasies we had as teenagers, hey? So, yeah, my, the, the year of 1975, it was, yeah. A lot, lot happened. Changed, a lot a lot happened a lot so changed. different right now so different the so lifetime different. that shona lee has lived holy moly i reckon so i'm no longer halfway to 90 i'm just a bit over that now <gasps> shut up <laughs> that's how i'm feeling she's 90 <laughs> come join me shona can we have Pearl on? I'd love to talk to Pearl one episode. Do you know what? Pearl is actually based on a true person. Hmm. Back in the day when Brendan, my husband, now husband, but then boyfriend, he um, he and I, it was when we were really, really young and first got together, right? We were in a pharmacy lining up to get something in the prescription line. We are getting a prescription for something. And... Um, In front of us, there was a couple, like a really old couple that was Mm. so cute. And they went to the counter and they were getting their prescriptions, filled their pills, getting their pills. Um, (laughs) And and, um, they, yeah, they asked to get their pension card or whatever card that they needed to, to show or whatever. And like he had the, the the husband had this big wallet and he like flops it open and he's like pulling out like a thousand cards and he's like Aww. not that one not that one like Aww. going through them like oh, not that one not that one. like Aww. going through all these cards and then the lady whose name was Pearl and she tried to take over she's like ah oh, it's taking too long and he so she leans over and she tries <laughs> to like get at the cards to be like I know where it is and he's like I got it. Oh. <laughs> and that just sat with me. Brendan oh, can't agree. These guys are so cute. Like oh. we didn't care that we had to wait an extra yeah. five minutes. So they found the cut. I'm like, oh my god, they are the cutest couple That's ever. That's the sweetest. Yeah. And so that was kind of like a running joke for a little while. Is like Brendan would be like, oh, I'll get it, Pearl. Like this. And then all of a sudden. <laughs> I would find myself just responding in pearl voice and then I love it. before I knew it she was just like something that came out every <laughs> it's like an alter ego and I've <laughs> I've been with her for so long that um yeah my kids know pearl well <laughs> and um half the time they're like mom stop it don't do the old lady voice stop stop no pearl go away <laughs> oh <laughs> I but love then, it. But then they've realized that that just comes with like me as their mum. And uh, they've now developed their own older, older egos. So That's cute. My son, Bodie, who's five, he's got Stephen, who is a very cranky old man. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah, he's like very cranky old man. And then, uh, yeah, love my daughter, name. Harper, who is seven, she's got Margaret. Margaret. <laughs> Margaret's cheat. got a bad bad hip. So um, oh, Margaret she... walks very, very slowly. Poor Margaret. And um, yeah, she has a sore hip. So that's um something dorky that we do in my family. <laughs> I absolutely love that. It just reminds me of, I've I watched a video of Indy Ups character. Margaret reminds me of Indy. She was walking around the kitchen. She had this limp and she was acting like she was, um, is it Gringo? No. What's that childhood movie, the Western one? Rango. 
Rainbow. Oh, with the um, chameleon. With the chameleon. And, you know, the older one that's got the... He's Johnny Depp. The limp. Yes. Yes. So that's who Indy used to be all the time. Ah, yeah, he farts out of his eyeball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We watched it. Oh, we only watched it recently. And that bit, you know, where he goes into the bar and he drinks the, I don't know, the cactus juice or whatever it is, and it makes his eyeball go like the farts (laughs) out of his eyeball. (laughs) So funny. (laughs) We had to watch that like 20 times. (laughs) We won it. (laughs) All right, let's end this episode. All right, my darling. Thank you for joining us for Shona Lee's birthday episode of the 1975 goodness. Yeah. And yeah, tell us on the socials, hashtag awkward question time and let us know what posters you had on your wall. Absolutely. Were you and if there was any walk kid? Like we anything were. significant that you can remember because I tried to Google what ice creams were out and <gasps> lollies and stuff but I couldn't find anything it's just all politics on Google at the moment it was annoying me so but if you find yeah if you remember what lollipops or what I remember I, I always loved a gay time that was always my favorite ice cream we but still buy them yeah how it like I don't understand how they're still like I know it's gay as in happy, like have a happy time. It changed everything else. Except I know. For that one. It's so surprising mm. that they haven't changed the game. But they're a classic. They are a classic. Great that art. and Bubble Bill. <gasps> yes. So good. Alright, we could talk all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, bro! Wow, girls. <laughs> wow, girls.